Members of the human family are coming together and celebrating life, celebrating the sacredness of Mother Earth, celebrating the sacredness of who we are as human beings. Well, we really focused on our purpose here in this plane of existence, the soul, the world's yet to come, the natural laws that will carry us to the fulfillment of the sacred prophecies regarding the emergence of the new springtime for all members of the human family, oneness. Throughout the Americas, before our relatives came from Europe, all our sacred prophecies promised that a spiritual winter time was coming. We didn't understand what that spiritual winter time was, although we were given in different prophecies certain ways to know what was coming. But when you live in truth, it's very difficult to understand what untruth is about. But sure enough, as prophesied, the union of the condor, the Quetzal and the eagle that existed more than 500 years ago, in which all the byways and highways of today are built upon, that supported and sustained 100 million relatives was in fact broken. And with it came a tremendous loss of relatives in this plane of existence. You know, some estimates are as high as 90, 90, 90 to 95% of the 100 million relatives who are here passed on to the other worlds yet to come. Primarily through disease that they didn't know the, the source of. And yet those prophecies promised that if we continued to pray, if we continued to have faith in these prophecies, if we continued to, to understand that nothing comes to us except for our own spiritual perfection, that we would emerge out of this long winter time of 500 years into a new spiritual springtime. And this new spiritual springtime is what is happening everywhere all at once today, including at this wonderful, historic, blessed coast gathering ceremony. We emerge from one cloud of blood from one beginning, which we know scientifically that's the case, that we all emerge from one seed. And in the metaphor of our sacred traditions, we talk about that time when we're all gathered beneath the sacred tree of life with the branches of a shadow and children of one father and one mother. And we were given all the original teachings, all parts of the human family, were symbolized by red from where comes the red sunrise, yellow to where the sun is at high noon, black from where comes darkness, and white from where comes the snows and the north winds. And it was prophesied that all would come back together after this long journey and bring back together all the sacred gifts we'd all developed. In 1975, we went down to Sweat House Lodge in Corvallis, Oregon. It was the first place they were ever using the sweat lodge, the Anikaka, the Renew and Move Breath of Life to help and heal alcoholism. And there's two wonderful elders there. One was named Abe Bernstick, who was a Dakota, but spoke fluent, fluent Cree. And the other was named Eddie Bellrose, who translated for Abe. He was kind of younger. And he shared with us many prophecies. And one he shared with us, we didn't understand at the time, he said, someday you young men will see the everywhere spirit made physically manifest on the earth. And when that day comes, you'll be able to look and see into the eyes of somebody on the other side of Mother Earth. He said, in that day, any untruth that had been hidden will be revealed. In that day, the wisdom and knowledge of ages and generations will flow everywhere, like an ocean, like a river, flowing everywhere. And of course, when the internet was first innovated, at least I found out about it, we began utilizing that tool of the everywhere spirit. Of course, we can see what it's grown to. Our sacred prophecies were very clear that 
we would go through an incredible, incredible birth process that would have pain and suffering in that process. To awaken ourselves to the understanding there's one human family and the hurt of one is the hurt of all and the honor of one is the honor of all and the foundation of this new emerging global civilization is justice, justice. The elimination of all forms of prejudice which comes if we understand that we're one human family. Uh, unity and diversity. And so we're right at the heart of that transformation now. And the fact is, we've gone over the edge. Forty years ago, the elders were saying, the great ice will melt. They knew it. He tried to share it everywhere. Nobody listened. And there's nothing we can do about it at this point. The great ice is melting and there's nothing we can do. Paris Climate Change Agreement, whatever, it's going to melt. And other is melting. That's going to raise our sea level at the minimum of 15 feet, whatever, how many meters that is, up. Now, that, that's going to create, we think we have issues now and challenges now, it's going to cause millions and millions of our relatives from all over Mother Earth to seek refuge, climate refugees. You know, that's just one of the dimensions of this awakening process. Of the herd of one is a herd of all. And we have been plunged so deeply, not really just 500 years ago, we're talking about more of the last two or 300 years, where we began to, to consume way more energy in the long run than we could ever balance with, with our sustain with Mother Earth, with the whole industrial age. As I listen deeply, deeply with my heart and soul, I can hear the death cries of an old, outworn, materialistic system dying everywhere. It was based on very faulty premises that the purpose of this life was to acquire material things and that would bring us happiness. All your economic theories, capitalism, Marxism, all based around the material side of who we are as human beings. And we can see we're learning very fast that's not true. That is not going to satisfy us. Okay. Now, on the other hand, for hope, I also hear, right here, at Blessed Coast, the birth pangs of the new. I choose to listen to the new. I choose to see that, for instance, one of our prophecies said, because of the understanding of the oneness of humanity, we would come up with one system of weights, measures, and currency. Okay, I saw the weights and measures part. It was happening. You know, it was just a couple of holdouts from the metric system. But I was saying, how in the world are we going to have one global currency? And then I see what's going on in cryptocurrency. That is a sorting process. That is going to happen with this whole blockchain uh, revolution, which you're just beginning. This is brand new. We're coming to that part of, of, of the, the, the realization that the current economic system, which, by the way, very simply, this current global economic system is based in unpayable debt. Unpayable. Unpayable debt. It's clear to see the petroleum age is over. Let's pray that it gracefully ends. Because most of the things right here we're sitting with in your cameras and me sitting on this chair has petroleum in it. So on the other hand, we can see the solar, other kinds of alternative energies emerging. And just right here, the powering of this entire festival, this entire experience on a whole new battery system based in lithium batteries that sits right up there by the stage, which I got a chance to see, not very big. And just as an embryonic thing, here we are out in Mother Earth, away from the, from the grid. An elder told me many years ago, he said, if you want to heal the people, bring them to the natural world. The natural world in itself will heal them. Anything else you add will be an extra dimension.
And so that's where we are. We're here in front of these beautiful mountains. Here, the beautiful stream flowing by. Can smell the fresh air. And it brings us back into the humility of being surrounded by this incredible world. So we can communicate with each other. We can listen a little bit better. We're not surrounded by all this, you know, materialistic world that has cut us off from the spirit. And another spiritual teacher said something I really believe that says, the city is the place of the body. The natural world is the place of the spirit. You know, there is an illusion that's being perpetrated. One illusion is that somehow or another, our nature is to be adversarial, that we can't get out of that nature. We're naturally uh, uh, aggressive. We're naturally warlike. You know, that is used to justify all the injustices going on. That's not true. We can see it in so many cases of, right here, people transcending that into a whole different spiritual place. So that's one, one this idea that it's impossible to go beyond. That is holding us back. We can choose to see life as one disaster after another followed by death and you go to hell, as some people want to see it. Life is just one disaster after another and you die and go to hell and burn forever. Or we can say life is just one opportunity after another to grow and develop and then we transcend and leave behind this earth suit and go on to realms beyond this, which we can experience right here and right now, which I did up here last night and through these ceremonies and have done many times. Also, there's a little bit of pain and suffering in it too, but I'm in for seeing thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, as it's stated in many, many, many spiritual traditions, indigenous spiritual traditions, other spiritual traditions, that we are going forward. You can be no good leader of spiritual warriors until you've been in front of the fiercest battles and received the deepest wounds.